Hey everybody! Today we're going to take a look at my tips for working with design systems in InDesign. Now we all work differently and some of us kind of hack things together instead of reading the software manuals. And that's okay, but too often we hackers miss out on a whole host of features that make our lives so much easier. Now these are just a few not so secret tricks I've picked up working with InDesign for the past 10 years. And hopefully you'll be able to use these to save time the next time you're working on a multi-page document. Here's what we're going to cover in a nutshell. Grids and master pages, setting up reusable typography styles and using color swatches. Now here's a side note. If you're one of those people who love using Illustrator but haven't broken into InDesign yet or, or don't see the point of it or you know, are confused, this video is perfect for you. But first, design systems. Uh, what are they? We're, we're not gonna go too deep here, but a design system outlines the rules, patterns, and elements that are used to make something look like it should. At its most simple, basic level, a design system outlines basic patterns like color use and typography, and then the way that you use the space available. Now, when these patterns are established, it's really tedious to keep entering in the right settings in our design software. And when I was using Illustrator for all of my layouts, I would always copy and paste blocks of type just to keep the formatting in place. But lucky for us, InDesign has fantastic features that, that help us automate the process of creating and using and updating design systems. So today we're going to be working on the Pebble Coffee Style Guide. Pebble is a fictional brand that I created. I love coffee and I've already established the bones of a design system here in this document that we're going to edit today. So I'm going to walk you through the process of adapting this style guide to a new brand or just reformatting it to fit like a pretty significant brand shift. Um, this template file is over a hundred pages long and every single page has actual copy on it, not filler text. So if we were going to update the design without using these automated design system features and reusable elements, it would take forever. It would be like creating a new document. By the way, the, the template file we're working on is available for sale in our shop at thefuture.com. So if you want to follow along, you can hit pause, go download that, and then come right back. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to open up our document and kind of give it a scroll through. You can see in the pages pane, we've got about 100 pages of content here that we need to update. And right above pages, we've got our masters pane. We have a few masters in there that we need to be aware of. Now, whenever I start something new, I always begin with the bones, the grid. So let's go ahead and, and make the grids and guides visible in our template. Now, I have, I have this feature set to one of the buttons on, on my mouse, this middle button here. But you can always use a, like a keyboard shortcut. So you notice how our entire design area is nicely off center to accommodate that page number on the left. Well, let's say we want to get rid of that page number and have equal margins all the way around. Now, individual pages can have their own grid systems in InDesign, but I prefer to work with masters for grids because you can apply masters to any page and make big changes to multiple pages at once. So, once you drag a master onto the page, all of the elements are applied on page and it overrides the page content. We'll do that here. Now you can tell if a page has a master assigned to it because it'll have a little letter flag on its thumbnail. That letter corresponds with the right master above. All right, so if I go up to our masters pane, you can see I have a few dedicated grids. Now I like nesting my masters as well, so you can see I've applied the A grids master to the ones with mouse type headers. It's, it's a master applied to the master that gets applied to the pages. Welcome to the matrix. Now, obviously we wanna edit our grid, so let's double click into uh, this master. Now you can see it's a blank page with a solid color background and it has our embedded grid. To edit the grid, you're gonna click layout and then margins and columns. And from here, we can reset our margins, which is the clear space around the border of the page, our columns, which are used to divide up the design area, and the gutters, which are the spaces between the columns. So let's just reset these to be even on all sides with pretty generous gutters in between. Nice. 
Now you can see the guides have changed. Um, everything's all symmetrical now, but it's not just changed here. It also changed the guides on every single page that has this master applied. Let's open up our mouse type master. Now, since we don't have that nice wide margin on the left anymore, I need to find a new place for the page number. So let's just move a few pieces of the mouse type around in the master and voila. Now, because all 100 plus pages have one of these masters applied to them, these changes are carried through the entire template. All right, I'm gonna go through the rest of the document and fix up all the rest of the page layouts. Um, the guides make it really easy. Everything just kind of snaps right to pl into place as you, as you drag them towards a guide. good. All of the pages have been adjusted and we have a new layout. Now let's say this, this company decided to go with a more classic typeface. Um, going through the document and editing the formatting for every single block of type would be crazy tedious. Luckily the guy who made this template is awesome and saved all <laughs> of the formatting types as paragraph style. Oh man, what a nice guy. So paragraph styles. Paragraph styles are saved typography formatting. To get to this pane, just go to window and then show paragraph styles. Now character styles is good too, but the main reason that I stick to mostly paragraph styles is that you can save things like line height and paragraph spacing or margins into the style. And you can't do that with character styles. Character styles only apply to the individual letters. Now I typically use character styles as add-ons because they can stack on top of paragraph styles. So I'll, I'll add character styles like light text and dark text. Once you have this pane open, you can see the entire list of styles that I've saved to the document. And each one of these is represented within a master page called typography. And, and that's just because I like to see all of my styles on one page. This looks terrible, but it's, it's nice because I like to see what I'm working with. You don't have to create this master, but it helps me. One thing to remember is, is that all of these styles, all of these name styles aren't in InDesign by default. I save them by just clicking the little add button at the bottom of the pane and naming them appropriately. And if I can create styles, you can too. I mean, it's, it's super easy. So whenever you have a new text block that needs to be fixed up, all you need to do is click the text block on the page and then click the style name and bam, reformatted. Super easy, right? So just like you can nest masters, you can also nest typography styles within InDesign. And what I've done is I've based most of these paragraph styles on the body text style. So I'm gonna start there. So let's say this, this company wants a more classic typeface. So I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is a Scotch Roman serif called Hercules. We're gonna change this paragraph, which is assigned the body text style. We're gonna change it to Hercules and then make some, uh, make some adjustments so, so that it looks good. There we go. Okay, so you can see that I just edited one block of text and the rest of the document hasn't been disrupted or changed. That's because you can change a single block of text and, uh, and what that does is it adds overrides onto that block. So what you see here is there, the overrides are stacked on top of the style just on this one paragraph. And you can tell because when you click on this text box, there's a little diamond next to the name in the style list. And when you see that, you know there are overrides on that block. But since we wanna apply these changes to the rest of the document, all we need to do is, is click on the reformatted text box and then right click the, uh, the paragraph style and then click redefine style. And what that does is it saves your overrides as the paragraph style. It overrides the existing settings in the paragraph style. And now the entire document has been edited. 
And you can see that even our heading styles have, have changed to the new font because they were based on this style, remember? Now, if you want to, you can edit the style directly by right clicking and, and clicking edit style. But I like to play with things on page and then redefine styles because then I know exactly what it's gonna look like. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the rest of the styles and update them to match the new look and feel. All right, so far we have a night and day difference here from, from when we started, but we're not done yet. Let's take this one step further. Let's recolor the whole document. Now, whenever you're working with InDesign, you're gonna find yourself in the swatch panel. So to get to swatches, you just go to window and then color swatches. And you can see as I scroll through that all of the colors used in this document are saved here as local swatches. Everything, I mean, even down to the color of the body text is colored using one of these swatches. Now, I am no color master. In fact, if you wanna learn color, check out Greg's class on color. It's Color for Creatives, it's awesome. Um, but what I wanna do is just kind of give this document a, a totally different feel by simply just changing the black and white values and then adding in maybe a few spicy accent colors. All right, so I've got my new palette here and I'm gonna pull from this to edit the rest of the document. And, and we're just gonna use this to pull from to set all of our new hues and save them as swatches. Now, since everything on page uses the current swatches anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna edit the swatches directly. So to edit these swatches, all you need to do is right click on the swatch and click swatch options. Now from there, you're gonna be able to copy and paste the hex code right into the box and that's it. You can use the other settings too. I just find hex codes really, really easy. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these swatches squared away. What's actually really cool about this is as I'm going through and changing the color swatches, everything that's assigned that color that's associated with the swatch gets changed in the actual document. So for example, the Pebble logo had the gray color assigned to it. And when I changed the swatch color, it changed on the page. So using color swatches is a great way to make document-wide changes in color without having to edit every single thing. And then you just have to go through the document and look for inconsistencies or errors um, where certain colors clash. As you can see, we have completely transformed the overall look and feel of this document by using the design system features built right into InDesign. This is 103 pages completely done in just a few hours. Now, if you didn't love InDesign before, you would love it after you finish this project. I hope this has been helpful for, for all of you people who are staring down the barrel of a long document project. And if you have any other tips about working with design systems in InDesign, I would love to hear them. Put them in the comments section below or, or just say hi. Um, I'm gonna be stocking the comments as always. And again, if you want a copy of this template, you can pick this up at thefuture.com forward slash shop. It's a part of a product that I've just released, the Style Guide Kit. This kit comes with everything that you've seen in the video, a keynote version of the template, an Adobe XD version of the template, a 70 page guidebook that covers everything about style guides, a copy arsenal full of text that you can copy and paste and use for your next style guides directly with your clients. Um, an example style guide from one of our real live blind clients. And then there's tons of webinars and video tutorials right there in the class. And honestly guys, I am incredibly proud of this product and, and I would love to see each and every single one of you in the next webinar for style guide customers. And for the 2000 of you who supported this product already, thank you. Um, I've got some surprises in store for you in the next few weeks. It's, it's gonna be great. And listen, you know, if money is tight, especially right now, uh, use these tips that we covered in this video to create your own style guide template. 
You know, tapping into the design system features in InDesign makes things so much easier, I, I promise. As always guys, thank you for watching. I want you to go out there and crush it. You got this. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We love you and we'll see you next time.